And at the end of the day, Singapore tends not to disappoint when it comes to fiscal policy. And that's because the country is in a very enviable position, uh, thanks to the usage of past reserves, strategic reserves that were accumulated, accumulated thanks to fiscal prudence in the past. And it really allows the country to spend uh, quite liberally when it needs to, to uh, get out of crises like this. But at the same time, similar to other countries in the region, it's about kind of striking this balance between providing continued support uh, for COVID-19 related funds, but also funding a longer term recovery. Yeah, and they're striking <clears throat> that balance. Uh, my only question is, it, it, this GDP forecast of 4 to 6 percent, uh, is it achievable? Uh, do you think that the government with its measures can actually uh, overshoot this mark? Are they being conservative, you think, given uh, the combination uh, of the different elements that they're working with? Actually, according to our forecast, we think it's a relatively conservative estimate. We think that growth is probably going to overshoot the government's 4 to 6 percent forecast range. And a large reason of that is due to fiscal policy. Uh, this tremendous fiscal policy support in 2020 really prevented the deep scarring that we've seen in other parts of the region when it comes to the labor market, stress on the banking system, for example, uh, the really deep hit to these kind of longer run drivers of growth. So the recovery can be a lot quicker in Singapore, coupled with ongoing fiscal support and a very uh, advantageous mix of exports. You know, we know from the news that there's a chronic shortage of semiconductors. Singapore is very well positioned in terms of semiconductor production, is seeing new capacity additions. So this recipe really should uh, translate to very strong growth in Singapore in 2021. Add to that, of course, how they've managed uh, the uh, virus situation with the vaccine rollout and the effective rollout on that front. Uh, all of that would aid domestic recovery. I want to understand what about uh, infrastructure spending? What about uh, getting projects going on that front and getting the investment cycle also contributing to this recovery story? Yeah, you're, that's a very good point. We also have to consider the fact that there is a very credible uh, vaccine strategy in Singapore that should see a large share, if not the entire population, inoculated by uh, well before the end of the year. And that allows Singapore to really stand out in the region. Now, when it comes to infrastructure, like you mentioned, there was a substantial boost to development expenditure and infrastructure financing in this upcoming budget. Uh, but there will be also a shift in how the government looks at financing that infrastructure. Previously, the government would never issue debt to finance expenditure, um, you know, given, uh, given Singapore's reserves and its fiscal rule in the Constitution. But now there will be um, the ability to issue debt for financing infrastructure over the long term. And it should really make uh, Singapore's infrastructure drive more sustainable and allow it to uh, actually allocate additional resources uh, over the coming years. So we expect actually quite a strong investment recovery, both public investment, as you see more MRT lines, uh, airport expansion, other projects. But also we must consider the private investment side of the equation as well. Singapore actually exceeded its target for FDI in 2020 and a lot of that is because of very capital intensive FDI in, in the semiconductor sector. So uh, this recipe does suggest a very, uh, let's say, sustainable investment rebound in the few years to come.